Hey guys, it's Mr. Riz here. Um, so we're gonna work on our next part, the intro to Python Activity 4. Uh, today's assignments are exercise one and exercise two. So we'll go over both of those, make sure you guys understand these. And this will be the last uh, round of uh, activities. Okay, so our goal here is to write a program where the person enters their school ID number. The program looks to see if that number is, if the number 10, if the number 10 is in their school ID, uh, the program print all the same. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to open this in Ripple so it's larger. Look at this. All right, so let's see uh, what the code in here is like. It. Okay, we got A equals 3, B equals 4. If A is less than 3, all right, so we got this if statement here. What starts out with an if, and we have a conditional, oh, move that around, conditional, and then colon print boo, end of conditional, and then we get print. So let's actually see what happens here if I run this. All right, so we get uh, end of conditional program, end of program. Now, what if we switch this around, if we made A like um, five? Well, then we just get end of program because it didn't match this conditional statement here. Okay, so next what we're going to do, I'm going to get rid of this triple quote out. And one thing, if you guys didn't know, if you have like a whole bunch of code you want to just block out, if you do like triple quote, it blocks out everything until the very next triple quote. So look at this section. Okay, so now I got here, um, enter a wor word, B equals Z, C equals A sub zero. Do you guys remember what A sub zero is? That is the first letter they write in. So if C equals equals B, now right here it tells you like equals equal is an operator for to see if the two things are equal. So one equal sign sets a value, two equal signs check to see if they're the same. There's also this exclamation point equals, which means does not equal. So what we're gonna do here is to see if the word begins with the letter, whatever this one is. So let's run this here. Enter a word. I'm going to pick apple. The word does not begin with Z. Okay, I will run it again. Um, you know, tiger. The word does not begin with Z. Okay, then we'll check zebra. The word begins with Z. So notice our output statement repeat or showed something else because we have it. So one thing to notice here is we have a conditional block. And in this conditional block, we start out with our if, and then we have the requirements, and we always end with the colon. And trust me, guys, you will forget this colon sometime. It's going to mess you up. Now, what we're going to have inside, so note if you notice here, there's a tab indentation. We are going to tab in what we want to do if this conditional is met. So if this first part is true, we're going to have it do this output. So then what we have otherwise here is this else statement that lines up with the if, and then we tab in to say what that else would do. So if this first condition isn't met, we're gonna print off this statement. So um, let's go ahead and see if we can start doing the assignment here. Okay. Uh, write a program where the person enters the school ID number. The program will look to see if the number 10 is in their school ID number. The program will write a statement saying it is or it is not. Okay, so it's gonna be really similar to this one here. But uh, I'm gonna start from scratch, just so you guys can know. No, you guys don't always have to start from scratch. In fact, good coding practice is to use something that's already made and change it up so it works better for you. But I'm gonna start from scratch here. All right, so I'm gonna call it like, I'm just say ID equals input. What is your school ID? All right, one second, guys, gotta pause the video. Okay, so we have their ID is stored in, or ID. So uh, one thing about this too, typically your school ID is numbers, but we're not gonna be doing any math to it, so we don't need to change this to an integer. In fact, actually, in this scenario, we wanna keep it as a string, in case you're wondering that. All right, so next what we wanna do is to check to see if the number 10 is in there. So what we're gonna do is start out with an if statement, if, and we're gonna to check to see if the string 10, so not so much the integer 10, but one zero, is in ID. And then we're gonna end with a colon here. So what's nice, if we just press enter, uh, 
the ripple already knows to tab it in because we're going to say what to do like if it is so if it is in if the number 10 is in the id we should tell them print the number 10 is in your id now what we should do is have an else statement so what we got to do is after we press enter it's still tabbed in to do something more to the if statement if we're done with it we got to tab back or i just press the backspace button and press else colon so else will then tab in and we're going to print uh what do we say the number 10 is not in your id okay so let's run this out and see what it goes so what's your school id okay if i say like uh eight six seven five three oh nine says the number 10 is not in your ID. So let me run it again, make up another one. What is your school ID? 1-800-3310. Uh, uh, oh, press enter. The number 10, okay, because it's right there at the very end. Oh, we'll just double check this too. Like if my school ID was 103, the number 10, because it's found right there, is in it. Okay, so that seems to work. Just make sure you submit this one. We'll move on to the next one. All right, so we'll move on to the next one. Make sure you guys are submitting these. Uh, that's the only way they can get turned in. All right, so this next exercise, our final goal is to write a program that shows a secret number and, or that stores a secret number and the program will uh, ask the user to guess that number. The program will print whether the guess was too low, too high, or correct. Okay, so let's take a look at this one here. So I'm just gonna open it in Ripple. So we can see it full screen. So we got this uh, first one, it says, please tell me a whole number, and then they make it a whole version of this. So this next one uses what's called the modulo operator. And if you didn't know what that is, this checks to see if the number is divisible by two. So what the modulo is, and we'll talk about this way later on in another section, uh, we find the remainder. So what you guys can see here is like, we have this if statement here, to check to see if the number is divisible by two. And then inside of this, we check to see another if. So these are called nested if statements. So you can see we have an if statement and inside of that if statement is another if statement. And there's really no limit to how many if statements you can put in. Now notice that the if statement for the divisible five gets tabbed in twice because there was two if statements that had a pass to print off this. This else statement corresponds to the, if the number is divisible by five, so on line five. And this else statement on line nine corresponds with the else statement on line four. So that's why tab indentation is really important. Tab indentation is probably the biggest uh, mistake people make in this class, is, or I shouldn't say that. It's the biggest mistake that they can't find out and then we have to go through one line and a code to figure it out. So if I run this code here, uh, it's going to tell me to pick a number. I can pick a number like three. It says three is an odd number. All right, I can pick another number like six. Six is an even number. Now, if I pick a number like 60, it will tell me 60 is divisible by 10 because it matched. It is divisible by two and it is divisible by five. Now, if I pick a number like 15, it should just tell me it's odd. Even though it's divisible by five, it doesn't get to this requirement because it never met the divisible by two. So think about computers, extremely logical. Um, they don't do anything unless they're told to do it. So the first thing they're gonna do is to check if it, is it divisible by two. If it isn't, it's gonna skip all that code there and go right to the else statement. All right, so let's, we can use this to help us out here, but we're gonna make a program the person enters a secret or we're going to store a secret number so let's do that first store a secret number so i'm going to put secret number equals all right um 740. all right then the program will get ask the user to guess that number all right so let's get a guess here guess equals input guess the secret number and then we gotta make sure, since we are gonna do some math, we're gonna check to see if it's lower or higher. We need to turn it into an integer. So guess equals the integer version of guess. Ooh. 
Okay, so now that we got, now we're gonna make some if statements. So let's see, like first, if guess is greater than secret number, just making sure. Ooh, I didn't. So, okay, if the guess was greater than the secret number, we would have a print guess was too high. So the other thing we want to do is else. All right, now, so let's see if there's a choice. If the number was too high, there's two other options. It could be, it could be too low or it could be right on. So we're gonna to practice to see like if, since there's two choices, we need to have another if. If guess is less than secret number, print, and notice how it's tabbing inside. So I'll, one thing just get used to, just press enter, it will automatically tab print. Guess was too low. And then we can have another else statement here. So this else would be if it wasn't too high and then it wasn't too low, we can print uh, you know, that's the secret number. Okay, so let's run this, always test this out. So we're gonna guess a number. Let's just guess any number. So I'm gonna put uh, like five. Guess was too low, which makes sense. Pick another number, a thousand. Guess was too high. So we're going through every possible scenario. So let's check 740. That's the secret number. So there's a lot of different ways we could have done this as well. We could have checked to see if it was low, then it was too high. We could have checked to see if it was the same, the right number, if it was equal, equal to. Um, but there's a lot of different ways we can do this. All right, so that ends this lesson here. So hopefully you guys learned some things about using the if statements. We will use this if statements a lot. They're a big part of the coding. Um, so if you guys need some help, you know, don't be afraid to email me. I can always shoot you a video or see me in class or on the Zoom sessions on Monday. You guys have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.